The Hart Memorial Trophy, the award presented annually to the NHL's most valuable player. Aside from three, every eligible player who's won this award has been inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame. Though the 90s are considered to be the dead puck era, there were some tremendous players to claim the title of NHL MVP. From whom many consider to be the second greatest NHL player of all time behind Wayne Gretzky, to the only goalie to win two. Today, we're taking a look at every NHL MVP of the 1990s. 1990, Marc Messier, the Edmonton Oilers. As captain of the Oilers, Messier had an outstanding season, recording 45 goals and 84 assists for 129 points in 79 games. He led his team to the Stanley Cup final against the Boston Bruins, where, in five games, he won his fifth cup with the Oilers. Though Edmonton had been a powerhouse throughout the 1980s, the 1990 Cup win came two years after Wayne Gretzky was traded away to the Los Angeles Kings. Messier won the Hart Trophy, edging out the second place Ray Bork of the Boston Bruins, who he'd beaten in the Cup Finals. In fact, Messier only won the league MVP by two votes. This stands as the narrowest margin of victory in the entire history of the Hart Trophy. Unfortunately, this was the last Stanley Cup won by the Edmonton Oilers, as things began to sour with their captain. After the 1990-91 season, Messi was upset that the Oilers were willing to let Adam Graves leave the team. He issued a public trade demand, saying that he wanted out if the Oilers were not willing to do what was necessary to keep important players. On October 4th, 1991, in one of the many cost-cutting moves by Edmonton management, Messier was traded to the New York Rangers. But we'll get back to him shortly. 1991, Brett Hall, the St. Louis Blues. Brett Hall was an offensive powerhouse during the 1991 campaign, scoring a remarkable 86 goals and tallying 131 points in 78 games. His total of 86 goals became the third highest for a single season in the history of the NHL, only behind Wayne Gretzky's 92 goals in 1981-82 and 87 goals in 1983-84. Hull accomplished the feat and scored his 87th in the second period of the team's regular season finale. After taking a stretch pass and slapping a wobbling puck from the top of the circle between the legs of Minnesota North Stars goalie, Brian Hayward. Recording the most goals in a single season as a player not named Gretzky, not only did Hull secure the Hart Trophy, but also the Lester B. Pearson Award as the NHL's most valuable player, as selected by his fellow players. Unfortunately, unlike Messier and the Oilers the year prior, the St. Louis Blues fell in the second round of the playoffs in six games to the Minnesota North Stars, who went all the way to the finals before falling to the Pittsburgh Penguins. 1992, Marc Messier, the New York Rangers. In his first season, as a member of the New York Rangers, Messi had another exceptional campaign. He led the entire league with 72 assists and 107 points in 79 games to earn his second Hart Trophy. However, the New York Rangers were ousted in six games in the second round of the playoffs by the eventual Stanley Cup champions, the Pittsburgh Penguins. The following season, the Rangers missed the playoffs, which marked the first time in Messi's career that he did not play in the postseason. But after a coaching change in the 93-94 season, Messi scored the game-winning goal in Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Finals in Madison Square Garden. He brought the Rangers their first cup in 54 years and became the first and to this date, the only player to captain two teams to the Stanley Cup, something that not even Wayne Gretzky himself could do. 1993, Mario Lemieux, the Pittsburgh Penguins. Mario Lemieux's 1992-93 campaign might be the single most impressive on this list, a season which helped cement him as the second greatest of all time behind Gretzky. The Penguins started the season well, and Lemieux set a franchise record with at least one goal in 12 consecutive games, from October 6th to November 1st. He was on pace to challenge Gretzky's records of 92 goals and 215 points, that is, until January 12th, 1993, when Lemieux announced that he was diagnosed with Hodgkin lymphoma, a type of blood cancer. He received aggressive radiation treatments and only missed a remarkable two months of play. When Lemieux returned, he was 12 points behind Buffalo's Pat Lafontaine in the scoring race. On the day of his last radiation treatment, Lemieux flew to Philadelphia to play against the rival Flyers, where he scored a goal and an assist in a 5-4 loss. Before the game, Lemieux earned a standing ovation from Philadelphia fans, 
a rare occurrence for any visiting player, much less one from a state rival. With Lemieux back, Pittsburgh won an NHL record 17 consecutive games to finish first overall for the first time in franchise history, with the team's 119 points still a franchise record. Lemieux scored at an incredible pace, notching on average 2.67 points per game, the third highest points per game for a season, behind only Wayne Gretzky's 1983-84 and 1985-86 averages. Lemieux won his second straight and fourth overall scoring title, finishing with 160 points in 60 games, catching up to and beating out Pat Lafontaine by 12 points despite playing in 24 fewer games. The Penguins were upset by the New York Islanders in seven games in the second round. After the season, Lemieux was awarded his second Hart Trophy as well as the Bill Masterton Memorial Trophy given to the player who best exemplifies perseverance, sportsmanship, and dedication to hockey. 1994, Sergei Fedorov, the Detroit Red Wings. Fedorov had a stellar 1993-94 season, putting up impressive numbers while also playing an incredible two-way game. On top of the Hart Trophy, he also took home the Frank J. Selke Trophy as the league's top defensive forward, as well as the Lester B. Pearson Award. He finished second in scoring behind only Wayne Gretzky with 56 goals and 120 points. Red Wings captain Steve Iserman was asked about Fedorov's play during the season, saying, I've only seen two other players that can dominate a game like Sergei, and that's Wayne and Mario. In my opinion, he's the best player in the league. Gretzky also shared his sentiment for Fedorov, calling him the best player in the game at this point. 1995, Eric Lindros, the Philadelphia Flyers. The 1994-95 season was shortened by a lockout, leading to each team playing just 48 games. But Eric Lindros was able to tally 29 goals and 41 assists, while also leading the Flyers to finish second in the entire league, while making the playoffs for the first time in six years. Lindros centered the infamous Legion of Doom line between John LeClaire and Mikael Renberg. They were given the name not only for their offensive play, but also their ability to dominate games physically. Philly actually made it all the way to the conference finals, where they fell to the eventual Stanley Cup champions, the New Jersey Devils. 1996, Mario Lemieux, the Pittsburgh Penguins. After playing just 22 games in the 1993-94 season, and stepping away from the game because of fatigue brought on by his radiation treatment, Mario Lemieux made his return for the 1995-96 season. Super Mario scored his 500th career goal in his 605th game against the New York Islanders. Lemieux had reached 500 goals at the second fastest rate, behind only Gretzky at 575 games. He finished the season with 69 goals and 92 assists to lead the league and then became the seventh player to win three Hart trophies and the fourth player to win five Hart Ross trophies. Despite Lemieux's return and stellar play, the Penguins fell to the Florida Panthers in the Eastern Conference Final in seven games. 1997, Dominic Hoshik, the Buffalo Sabres. Dominic Hoshik was one of the league's most successful goaltenders of the 1990s and early 2000s, winning six Vezina trophies the most under the award's current system of voting. In 67 games played in the 1996-97 season, Hushik recorded a 930 save percentage and a 227 goals against average, while boasting five shutouts. Despite his stellar play, Hushik's success that year was somewhat overshadowed by a conflict with then-head coach Ted Nolan. The conflict created a tense, click-like atmosphere for the Sabres, and even resulted in Hoshik attacking a journalist critical of his mental toughness. 1998, Dominic Hoshik again, the Buffalo Sabres. Ted Nolan was only offered a one-year extension to return to the Sabres, despite winning the Jack Adams Award as the NHL's top coach. He rejected this offer because it was too short, and decided to part ways with the franchise. This upset many fans, who blamed Nolan's departure on Hoshik's alleged attempt to rid him. For the first six weeks of the next season, he was booed so vigorously that arena workers would play tapes of a crowd cheering to help balance it out. As the season progressed, the booing of Hoshik ceased as he posted a league record seven shutouts in the month of December and continued to play at an elite level with a 932 save percentage and a 209 goals against average with 13 shutouts while playing in a career high 72 games. For the second year in a row, he won the Vesna Trophy, the Lester B. Pearson Award, and of course, the Hart Trophy, becoming the first goaltender in NHL history to win the Hart twice. His MVP seasons with the Sabres were perhaps the greatest seasons ever 
by a goalie. 1999, Yarmir Yager, the Pittsburgh Penguins. With 44 goals and 83 assists for 127 points in 81 games, Yager halted Hoshik's quest for a third consecutive heart and won the award for the only time in his legendary career. To be honest, he probably could have won a few more. Yager was also named MVP in balloting by the players, receiving the Lester B. Pearson. Between the 1997-98 to 2000-2001 seasons, Yager would also impressively win four straight NHL scoring titles. Yager was absolutely unstoppable, and a big reason the Penguins would continue to make the playoffs in the post Mario Lemieux era. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to hit like if you enjoyed, and click subscribe for more NHL content. We'll see you in the next video.